welcome everyone to our sixth Sunday afternoon speaker series. And welcome also to those on Zoom. We're really happy to have everyone here. Uh, and I think it's been a really successful series. It is with great appreciation that we, the residents of Protection Island, acknowledge this land as the unceded territory of the Snanamo First Nation and of their legacy throughout the island. Thank yous again to Peter for setting up and for making coffee, uh, for Emily uh, for Zoom set up and for recording. Thank you. Is my voice okay? Is it loud enough? Fine. Yeah, okay. Uh, it's not? Oh, okay. Snack donations. Is that better? Snack donations this week will go to the quilters uh, who need money for uh, fabric and um, thread and that sort of thing and uh, who donate once a year to the, the Lions Club. So we're really happy to be able to give them some money this time. Housekeeping. Uh, the talk is being recorded. Uh, there's just one washroom today, as uh, has been the case. Uh, questions will be at the end of each speaker. And we'll have three speakers this this year, this time. So Raylene will be first, and uh, and then Valley and Will will go ahead, and then Jim will bring up the end. So uh, with our island bottle recycling, Zoomers use the chat box, please, and uh, raise your hand if if you are not uh, sure how to do that. And please mute yourself until the end of each speaker. So now our first speaker is Raylene Mann. Raylene Mahan is the Zero Waste Coordinator with the City of Nanaimo. Uh, Raylene has a Bachelor of Arts Honours degree with a major in Geography and Environmental Studies and a minor in Environmental Economics and Sustainable wow. Development. She has experience working with different municipalities and is new to Nanaimo after living in various communities across BC and Alberta. She has a passion for stewardship of our natural environment and aims to create meaningful connections in the community, foster collaboration, and effect positive change. Hey, that's what we're here for today, right? Raylene is married. Her husband is here somewhere. Uh, and uh, she has one little child who you've seen wandering around with their rabbit ears on. Her husband works in wastewater management in the city of Nanaimo as well. So uh, they make a tremendous couple for the city. Thank you very much. Uh, they've been in Nanaimo for about a year and a half uh, after moving from Kamloops, and she's to say love it. Please welcome Raylene. Am I in the way? No, I you know, I don't think so. Do you want your um, PowerPoint on right now, or do you want to talk first? Um, no, I guess. Yeah, well, we can put it on and I'll got a title page, so start from there. Yeah, so thanks for the wonderful introduction. Um, very happy to be here. It's been a long time coming, it feels like. We started talking about doing this. Um, yeah, so started talking about doing this presentation in December of last year and uh, just one thing after another. Um, but I just started in this role as zero waste coordinator okay. with the city of Nanaimo this past November. Uh, so just coming up on about five months in the role. Um, it's, uh, it's an exciting role with lots of opportunity, uh, very dynamic. Um, so hoping to start a lot of new programs within the city this year um, just to kind of further our zero waste initiatives and reach some goals that we have set. Um, so I did change my title a little bit. Um, so just to expand on not only recycling, but some where uh, some of our other waste goes, but mostly I'll be discussing what happens to our recycling, um, kind of all the ins and outs of the process. So let me do the next slide. Um, so from my what I've learned um, about Protection Island, a very unique community here, um, Bev gave me a quick rundown of kind of how the island works, and I've spoken with Emily as well, um, so very excited to be here. Um, and so from what I've learned, there's two kind of options for community uh, residents to be able to dispose of their waste, um, particularly things like recycling and compost. So one being the Port of Nanaimo Marina, and then the second, uh, the Protection Island Supply Pickup. Um, so we'll do the next slide. So 
behind Java Walkie is this kind of setup. So probably many of you are very familiar. Um, so here, lots of access to different options. So I'm going to go into kind of where each of these waste streams will end up going once you dispose of your items there. Um, so we'll go to the next slide. So the blue carts, those are the recyclables, um, not necessarily anything that's recyclable, recyclable can be put in those bins. So I'll go into the details of exactly what kinds of materials can be recycled via this method and why. Um, and then green cart organics, so those are collected um, and they go to Convertus, which is down by Dew Point. Um, and then the garbage is taken to the RDN landfill. And then the flattened cardboard, um, so rather than going to one of those, it'll have its own end market. So I'm not exactly sure um, where GFL takes it, beca but because it's separated, it can go directly to a processing center rather than having to go through the sorting and um, what the other kind of streams need to go through. So they'll have their own direct um, processing facility that they have an arrangement with. Um, but with the city, we collect when we collect, it's all mixed together. So it has to go to a sorting facility first. So. Um, just some ins and outs on what goes where. So we'll do the next slide. So landfill garbage, when it comes down to it, if we're utilizing the resources available to us, what actually goes to the landfill is relatively minimal. Um, so right? so we've got things like broken glass and ceramics. Um, so those things, they can't be recycled, especially ceramics. Ceramics are products, household items, um, and currently there is no means for them to be recycled. So those types of things would have to go to the landfill. Um, candy wrappers, just a small little wrappers, um, diapers, wipes, uh, personal hygiene items, dryer lint and dryer sheets. So if dryer lint, if your clothes were exclusively natural materials, then you could actually compost your dryer lint. But because so many of our clothes are made of synthetic materials, that dryer lint is actually a lot of the times different forms of plastics. So we don't want to put that in our compost because then it becomes microplastics in our soil. Um, and then things like elastic bands, twist ties and strings, fortunately they don't have uh, a way to be, unless you reuse them yourself, um, there is no way to recycle them at this time. Um, and then, so cardboard or papers that are lined with foil, because they are a bilaminate product, there's no way to separate those materials um, in the processing uh, facilities. So those types of paper and cardboard products would have to go into the garbage. And then paper towel can go in the compost. However, if it's used to clean, so if it's used um, to mop up uh, motor oils or you use chemical cleaners, then that paper towel would have to go into the landfill. Um, if you clean with vinegar or things like that, then it can go in the compost. Um, or if you mop up food oils, it can go in the compost. But anything that is chemical, then it would have to go in the landfill. And then the last one that we have here are the non-repairable items. So broken toys that can't be fixed or passed on for someone else to use, a broken garden hose um, that can't be repaired, things like that. Um, and then specifically, we cannot put electronics or they're not supposed to go in the landfill. Uh, we have lots of depots and I know there are means to uh, dispose of electronics from the island uh, here. And then hazardous waste, of course, and recyclables are organic, so we don't want them in the landfill because we can divert that. Um, and our landfill uh, really has limited space available. Uh, we're looking at a very uh, short period of time in terms of the lifespan of the landfill. So hoping to extend that as long as possible by keeping these kinds of things out of it. So next slide. So organics, I won't go through everything on the list um, in this case, but for those green bins, um, if it's organic, you can put it in the green bin. So um, leaves, grass, light trimmings. So some yard waste is accepted. What's not accepted are branches. Um, so anything large like that. Um, and then things like floral arrangements, coffee grounds, tea bags, coffee filters. Um, as long as the tea bags are not, some of them are that kind of mesh it's a plastic material, so those would not be compostable. So it's it's somewhat simple, but then when you start looking at product by product, sometimes you have to do a little bit of investigating before you can really determine where it goes. 
Um, you can put meat, poultry, fish, bones, bread, dough, pasta, food scraps, um, lots of those different kinds of things. And then so one of the things that we find that we run into with confusion is what do I do with pizza boxes? So if they're saturated with grease, which a lot of times they are at the bottom, then that goes in your compost. Um, if they are clean, but somehow you manage to maybe don't put cheese on your pizza and there's not really any grease, then it can go in the recycling. So if any kind of paper, cardboard that's saturated with food waste, um, so fast food, uh, like the fries containers and things like that, those can go in the compost. They don't have, they don't go in the recycling uh, because the material is not of high quality. So it'll degrade the products that can be produced with the papers that are recycled. So I'm going to go into detail on all these, so I'm not going to list them at this point. Um, the biggest things that I'm going to talk about right now are just the items that are not accepted in our blue cart program. So we say recyclables, not recycling, because there's lots of things that are potentially recyclable, but they can't be put into the blue cart to be recycled. And I'll get into exactly why that is um, in the next couple of slides but just for what cannot go into the blue carts. So soft or flexible plastic. So this category can be a little bit confusing um, because maybe what I consider to be a soft or flexible plastic isn't the same as what Bev considers to be a soft or flexible plastic. So a kind of a, a easy cheat is if you can stretch it, if you can push your finger through it, or you can crumple it in a ball, that's soft or flexible plastic. So things like, um, food pouches, those would also be considered flexible pla um, plastics as well, or even some dishwasher tabs come in pouches. There's a lot of products now being packaged in the, the pouch type that's also flexible. So you can kind of crumple it up and it crinkles. Um, so there's lots of different ways that people try to distinguish what soft plas plastic is. Um, but essentially, if it doesn't hold its shape on its own, then that's a soft plastic. Um, so like toilet paper, the plastic that it's wrapped in. Um, yeah, lots of different examples. There's a lot of plastic packaging out there. Um, but yeah, so if it's super flexible, then that has to go to a depot. And then glass. So we get some confusion on glass. So say if you have a vase at home that you don't want anymore, it's just a clear glass vase, and you have a pickle jar, the pickle jar has to go to a depot the glass vase would have to be donated, okay? So they seem almost like the exact same thing, uh, but what it comes down to is the way that the Recycle BC program works, which is the program that we operate under, is it's a stewardship program. So they work with manufacturers, producers, and retailers that sell products to create an agreement that they'll be responsible for the end life of that product so recycle, they create that contract with Recycle BC, and then those are the items that Recycle BC accepts. So Recycle BC accepts packaging, not products. So the vase is a product. You buy the vase to serve a purpose. You put flowers or whatever. The jar, the pickle jar is packaging. You bought the pickles, the pickles were packaged in the jar. So that's kind of the distinction there. So. That's kind of the little quiz you can give yourself. Did I buy the jar or did I buy what came in the jar? So um, yeah, I'm, I'll get into that a little bit more detail here in just a couple of slides. Um, scrap metal. So a lot of times we'll see things like barbecues or pots and pans or different frames for different things. Um, a lot of times people have this idea that I'm not exactly sure where it goes, but I'll put it in here and someone will get it to the right place. That is not what happens. For sorting facilities, I'll go through that process. We do not have people that sort the products. It's primarily through uh, mechanical sorting processes. So there's different procedures that happen there. It's pretty interesting. It's almost like, like a video game or something. There's magnets and there's fans and there's ballistics and there's conveyor belts. Um, yeah, so uh, the next one is styrofoam. We do not accept any styrofoam in the blue cart, so that would have to go to a depot. Um, harder soft cover books, they have to be donated. If it's a book that you think nobody's going to want this book, um, then it has to be taken to the lamp. 
So it's not the not an ideal end result for our books. Um, so if we can donate them, if someone else will use them, then we kind of want to lean that direction. But otherwise, I had someone that was like, no one's going to want an accounting from 1995. And I was like, fair enough, but I still can't recycle it. So, um, and then construction materials are waste. So I feel like that one's, there's, it's wood, chip rock, insulation, you know, little plastic that things come wrapped in, stuff like that. So that's either landfill, um, sometimes when things are taken apart delicately, things can be reused, cabinets, things like that, but otherwise it's not accepted in the blue cart. Um, again, hazardous waste, hazardous waste has to be handled appropriately. Um, last year, there were eight facility fires caused by batteries that ended up in the recycling. Mm -hmm. And it's extremely dangerous just with the machinery. Um, and then there are staff there, so it puts staff at risk. There it can ignite in the actual um, collection vehicles as well. So it's really important for the safety of the people that work in the industry that hazardous items are handled appropriately and disposed of appropriately. And then any kind of personal hygiene items. That's a little bit straightforward, but you maybe be surprised <laughs> the things that we find in our recycling. Um, sometimes it's just a convenience thing, easy to get rid of it. I don't think um, in this case it's the same because you have to take it there anyway. So taking that extra step to sort it. Um, so we'll do the next slide. So we'll get into the nitty gritty of recyclables um, for blue cart collection with the city of Nanaimo. So um, this is actually one of our loads of recycling um, that our, one of our trucks actually collected. Um, so this is actually quite a good load. Um, there are some contaminants. So soft plastics right here. I think that's over wrap from toilet paper. Um, this is a pet food bag right there. Um, but otherwise, this was relatively clean load. Um, so that was exciting to see. You can see it's primarily paper and um, firm plastic that's in this load. So that's what we want to see. Uh, so we'll go into that a little bit further. Next slide. So blue cart recyclables are kind of broken down into three categories. So there's plastics, paper, and metal. So, so as far as paper packaging is concerned, there's a lot on that list. Um, and if you ever have any questions about you're unsure of what goes where, we have several different tools that will be relevant for the marina um, or drop off. Uh, so the city of Nanaimo has a website um, and then in there, the city services, garbage, recycling, I'll show you exactly uh, where it is, but there's a tool, it's called the Waste Wizard Tool. You can search any item and it'll tell you exactly where that item goes. So if it says blue cart, it'll go in the blue cart there that's at the marina. If it says green cart, same thing, green cart that's at the marina. Um, so don't feel like you need to commit these to memory because there's a lot of them. Um, but so when it comes to paper and packaging, you'll see here like shoe boxes and um, cereal boxes, egg cartons, the coffee trays, coffee cups. Um, this is the paper berry uh, basket, ice cream cartons. Um, as long as it's a paper material that's been used to package something that it is recyclable in your blue cart. Some kind of exceptions to that rule that Recycle BC is now accepting, which is exciting, but kind of complicates their rule of packaging versus products because they're now accepting, you can't see behind here, but gift bags, gift cards, and gift wrap. So those are all products, but they're very similar to packaging, right? So the bag you're using to hold and it's holding something else. Um, so those can be recycled, which is exciting, but it does complicate the rules. Um, magazines can be recycled, books cannot be recycled. Um, letters, inserts, flyers, things like that. Uh, brown paper bags, that's another one that kind of complicates that rule of packaging versus products. You buy brown paper bags, maybe you use them for lunch or whatever. Um, so you're buying it as a product, but again, it's serving a packaging type purpose. So it's kind of that gray area, but it's still, I think it's more exciting that they do accept those materials, even though they are products. 
Um, and then this is the paper uh, formed paper food takeaway containers. I think they're becoming more and more common. Um, so those can be recycled if they're clean, but this would be again, one of those items that if it's completely saturated with food, it goes in your compost because it's completely paper, it can degrade in the composting process. Um, are there any questions about paper products before I move on? I know we said we do questions afterwards. Yeah. Counting. Yes. So why don't you just cut out the pages and shred them? Is that okay? Would that be normal with just, just shred shredded paper or not? If you wanted to do that, I'm not going to tell you not to do that. Recycle BC will have no way of knowing that you've done that versus just recycled your or shredded your mail, right? So if you want to go through that process, I'm going to say yes. Do you have to take the plastic window out of envelopes before it's recycled? You, it's best if you can, but I mean, if something gets in there, that and then it's okay. Um, for the paper disposal now, and it's a uh, dark, um, it has paper and then it also has plastic. And, and I used to sort everything because they had separate containers for paper and plastic. Yes. But now, and somebody said, oh, well, it just all goes in together anyway. But now you can put them all in together. Right? Yes. In the blue cart, you can put those all together. Yeah, absolutely. In the back side. Wax paper, like the inside cereal boxes? Wax paper does it cannot be recycled Sorry. because yeah, that wax has permeated the paper, so it yeah. can't be separated. Sorry, uh, Rick. Yeah. Um, I just want to note that the descriptions you're giving, although some of them apply to us, these are for the blue bins at the marina. This yes. is not for what PI supply. Yes, we'll collect and we'll get to that later. That's exactly yeah. right. Yeah, so this is exclusively for those bins that are down at the marina. Um, there's like the cardboard, uh, I shouldn't say cardboard, they're like waxed um, milk containers that get recycled at our bottle depot here. But then there's like whipping cream and a, a variety of other ones that do not get recycled because you don't pay yes. on them, but they're waxed. So do they go in those blue bins? Yes, they do. This is, what, yes. So <laughs> they're gable top, we call them gable top cartons, and they can go in your blue in the blue cart to be recycled. As far as how they distinguish, but in the sorting process, they've got some method of identifying those products and sending them to the appropriate place to be recycled. Uh, but yeah, so those ones, there's lots of um, exceptions. So I appreciate the confusion that comes along with the blue cart program because it is confusing. Uh, I work in the industry and I'm always having to, I'm always asking Recycle BC questions. What about this? What about that? Um, so yeah, it is not a straightforward program, but we are uh, a leader in Canada um, with our program. So yeah, we have some questions from the chat. Yeah. Uh, is it good to put electrical tape on the end of a battery before recycling it at the depot? Um, so lithium batteries need to be bagged, but the other batteries, um, they don't request that you do that. Um, so it's definitely not required. Okay. Does shredded paper need to be kept in a separate bag? Yes, that's a great question. So shredded paper is another one of those things where it's an exception and this exception can be very confusing. So shredded paper in the blue carts has to be put in a clear plastic bag, even though Plastic bags are not accepted in the blue cart. So I'll break down why that is. It sounds absolutely ridiculous. But so what happens if it's clear, it's easily identifiable that it's shredded paper. The only thing that can go in that bag is shredded paper has to be clear so it's easy easily identified. So the sorting process is not done by people, but there are people there that will pull out contamination as best they can. So when they see that clear plastic bag filled with shredded paper, they can easily and quickly identify it. They pull it out immediately. And so the reason that the shredded paper has to go in that bag is that if you dump it into your cart, not in a bag, 
then it actually doesn't get recycled. It's so small that it ends up not ending up with the rest of the paper materials. So then it's kind of defeats the purpose of trying to recycle it. Um, so by keeping it in that clear plastic bag, employees can quickly and easily pull it out. If you put it in a brown paper bag, that would be considered contamination because they have no way of knowing what is inside of that bag. Wow. If you think about it, Yes, because it's on a conveyor belt and it goes by so quickly. So the, what it is, is uh, when it's in, say, a brown paper bag or a bag, a plastic bag that's opaque, those employees cannot quickly and easily identify it as shredded paper. And what can happen is, unfortunately, we have a lot of issues with people putting recycling in bags in their, gar er, sorry, in their recycling carts, in their blue carts, or putting garbage in their blue carts. And so, as you can imagine, you probably wouldn't want to dump out somebody's garbage and start digging through it. So it poses a very serious health risk to those employees. So if it's not in a clear bag and they can't easily and quickly identify it as shredded paper, it's automatically a contamination because they cannot go through it for health and safety. So it just gets tossed out. Yeah. But this is when it's going in a blue bin. If it's going direct, directly to regional recycling, it can be in a paper bag. So if you're giving it to PI Supply, it will go straight to recycling and be sorted by a person, not a machine. We're going to speak to the differences after this. This is what happens with the blue bin program, which is the bins in the Jabberwocky. Program. This, yes. And a lot of the uh, divisions of products overlap, but there are a lot of exceptions in our recycling system, which we're going to get to after this. Yes. So the milk cartons and whipping cream and half and half, they can go into the blue bin in the Nanaimo in the parking lot? Yes. Even the small ones? Yes. Okay. They're yeah. great for fire starters, clean, stripped, be good for fire starters. In the back. Mm -hmm. So the fact that I've been neatly putting my not non-shredded paper into a paper bag and carrying it down there has actually made it um, into contaminated stuff. Yes. So, but you can do that and then dump it in the bin. Oh, sure. But but if it's put in in a bag, they have no way. So you'll do that and it'll be perfect. And that would be awesome because it would really maintain the quality of that paper when it's going to the next step in processing. Yeah. But the next person puts their old lunch that they found back their car that they packed in a brown paper bag and they don't really feel like going through it so they just throw it in their recycling mm. and so when it gets to the sorting facility they have no way of knowing that this is you know somebody's just take what i'm, I'm already doing and dump, dump it up it. yeah okay. exactly that's exactly right empty. yeah just dump it in keep it empty yeah yeah thank you <laughs> okay in the very back but I'll just ask one for a second. Um, or actually, I'm pointing this out that besides those blue bins and the PI supply recyclable uh, that we have, there is also, if you want to get rid of your batteries, you can go to London Drugs and they have a whole little receptacle that accepts batteries. Yes. And they also accept the soft plastic and pre packaged things that you're talking about. Yes. They have that thin, even though it says, Plastic bags only, it actually accepts the entire collection of things that go along with those plastic bags, like crinkly things. And yes. And yeah. And when I say things. depot, I it London Drugs is included in that. So that waste wizard tool that I mentioned previously on the city uh, webpage, we also have an app that you can use. If you were to type in batteries, London Drugs would come up, regional recycling would come up. Um, there's actually two regional recycling depot locations. So all those locations that you can take those items, they'll come up in that search. So if you ever have any confusion, that's a great tool because uh, it'll list everywhere, address, hours. Yeah, so the hardware stores also take them too, right? A lot of stuff, big things is light bulbs, big things are with the fluorescent compacts and mercury in it. We saw a lot of Cuba dumped in the roofs. Uh, so don't throw them in the garbage because they're full of other toxic stuff. Yes, those will be considered hazards. Plastic baggies for your batteries, right? Because they do explode quite often. I've had several little batteries from all over the place explode or they start leaking acid. Yeah. Um, the soft plastic's nice, but the mall will not accept glass in the garbage can that says glass. 
It is pop bottles and beverage bottles only. If you put glass in there, the security guards will come up and usher you out of the building. <laughs> Even if it's just one. Are you allowed back? No. A paper container, say a, a tissue box, yep. which has plastic on the top. Yes. And also you, you show a chip box, a chip container there. Um, normally they're going to have maybe a plastic lid or the bottom is going to be plastic or, or even um, maybe aluminum or something on the bottom. Yep, that's a great question. So um, this would be a multi-material product, but it's primarily paper, so I've included it here. But the bottom, these are spiral cans. So um, say like the freezer juice concentrate that you buy or um, like Pringles or um, crescent rolls, whatever. Um, so if it has a plastic lid, just leave the lid off. And because the blue cart paper and plastic are put together, and so are metal. Um, all three of those streams go into the same blue cart. You can just take the lid off and pop mm -hmm. it in the cart. Um, and then the metal portion at the bottom, you don't have to worry about that. The processing uh, facility where it gets sorted, they manage removing those parts. Um, so yeah, you can still put it in there, just lids, just keep the lids off. It's the same as if you had a Starbucks coffee cup that has a plastic lid, just pop the lid off, give it a quick rinse, toss it in the blue cart, you're good to go. Does that help? The Kleenex box as well. Um, so that small amount of plastic that's in there, if you have the time, rip it out, toss that in the garbage because that's soft plastic or take it to a depot um, and then toss the uh, box in the blue cart. But it's the same as the envelopes with the little bit of the plastic window. If you can remove it, it's always best to do that. If you miss it, it's, it's not the end of the world. It's better to get that in there um, than not. I mean, always ideal. Yeah, if you can separate those different types of products, absolutely. And then we've got red. Yes, um, you mentioned if the paper's too small, it might not be picked up. So if we get tags off our clothing that says in its own paper. Yes. And we put it in there, that's going to go into the garbage because they can't pick it up? Well, it'll go through the same sorting process. It's just those smaller items are more likely to fall out during that process rather than making it to the end of the line with how the paper gets sorted. So paper is one of the ballistics. So they shoot compressed air and it catches the paper and it shoots up in the air while the rest of the recycling continues to go down the line. Yeah. <laughs> So <laughs> those smaller paper, they just may not get the lift, right? And they'll go off the line. So if you have a bunch of small tags and you put them in a clear plastic bag, then, yes, you can. And that's so another odd rule. <laughs> so if you have a cereal box, if you have a bunch of paper items and they're together, it will as long as they're not in a bag. So if you put your tags inside of a cereal box, it'll be okay. We just don't want to bag things. Yeah. Valley? Um, so last February, the rules changed about the dome top, the dome top um, milk container. Yes. So because we have a Lions Club, um, refundables program on our island we separate yes. refundable containers from not and I was totally confused and trying to convey this to the island what I was told wonder if you can confirm this that if you can drink the like milk if you can drink it right out of the box so soy product you know almond those are recycled yeah uh, those are refundable Yes. But if you use it's like cream and you dilute something with it or have to add something to it those recycle. Yes. Well, <laughs> this is the only way I can understand which ones to give to the Lions Club with my bottles and which one to keep. If, if, yeah. it, if it's something I drink like a juice straight out, it can go to the Lions and they get money for it. Yes, that, exactly that's exactly right. Um, and then um, 
Another great resource is Return It or Encore online. They break down all of the different types of cartons that they now accept. Um, and under the Recycle BC program, they work with Encorp. So even though technically like a milk jug is supposed to go um, and be returned for refund, if it goes in the blue card, it'll still be accepted. It'll still be recycled. So that is the same thing for the milk um, and those kinds of items. Um, so if, you, if you're not taking them for, for refund, same with like pop cans and stuff too, they're all supposed to go. Um, but if they're included in the blue cart under the Recycle BC program, they'll still accept them, they'll still recycle them. Could you send a couple of those links maybe even yeah. after? Like, maybe absolutely, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I can do that, no problem. Do you have the power to request that the government uh, recycles, let's say, uh, windshield washer fluid plastic containers we the same as milk jug containers oh in, in the, the refundable section so they all get actually recycled well it just gets tossed yeah um so i don't have the power um but <laughs> i can um uh, so i do make requests or inform um the provincial government that does the epr which is the extended product responsibility um, so the different items that are included under that umbrella. So those are the items that Recycle BC then works with the manufacturers, producers, and distributors of um, or retailers uh, to actually recycle. So currently those are recyclable. So if you put them in the blue cart, they'll be recycled. Um, but there's just no refund for it at this yeah. time. I'm just like people to tax it's the same thing, but they're different. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's definitely something I can look into um, and see if it's something that they're considering doing under the program. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, I just don't have that much sway. <laughs> um, and then very back and then I'll come to you then. Um, I was just wondering, I wanted to ask about like in pop like cleaning when people uh use a mayonnaise container and they clean it and then they put it in the blue bin yeah but then i'm wondering about like for example there's a couple of different shopping classes that you can go to that have their own sort of recycling systems and they have compost and whatever recyclables etc and those get basically they're not very well distributed and yeah. i was wondering what happens when all that stuff gets mixed up is that part of the blue bin or do they have their own separate Commercial is separate. Recycle okay. BC only collects and manages residential okay. recycling. So any kind of large commercial or industrial um, facilities that have their own program, they're managing those products through their own agreements with processing facilities and, and markets. So Recycle BC has all their own contracts for collecting, delivering, sorting, processing, and then um selling to end markets that whole chain which i will just give a brief overview of that's entirely organized by recycle bc so um but that's exclusively residential so on that same note what happens to products that don't exactly get clean yeah so it is important to um get large amounts of residue out of those materials but if there's like a little layer in there then it, it's okay it's the large amounts of residue so say you have a you know an inch in the bottom of your peanut butter jar and you're like oh i don't feel like getting rid of that that is too much but if you take a spatula and scrape it out as best you can and then put that in there without washing it that will be okay yeah okay so you don't have to it doesn't need to be clean like you could eat out of it again and eat something new yeah, so if you can get as much residue out by scraping, what I do is I put a little pump of dish soap and just a little bit of water, put the lid on, and I shake it up after I've scraped it with a sca uh, spatula, dump that water out, maybe give it a little rinse, and that's it. If there's still a couple, it's okay. So, and so why, why is it we cannot recycle glass packaging? Good question. So, glass packaging in the blue cart when everything gets dumped in there the our process is not manual it's automated so that means the truck has an arm that comes out grabs the container the blue cart dumps it into the truck so it's all metal so you can imagine when the glass gets emptied into the truck 
it shatters. And then what happens is that shattered glass impregnates other recycling. It can't be removed. And then that recycling becomes contaminated. So in addition to that, it also poses a safety risk to employees at the sorting facilities because as they're reaching in to pull out other contaminants, there could be glass impregnated in any of that material. Uh, they do wear puncture-proof glasses or um, gloves, but it's not a foolproof system. And then um, we have compactors in the truck. So if it doesn't break when it gets dumped in, it's going to break when it gets squished. And there's a, and then the actual sorting facilities, there's conveyor belts, there's things that drop, there's things that shoot up. There's a lot of different processes where that glass is going to probably be broken. And then when it's broken, it eats up the belts, it eats up the, it gets stuck in the gears and all the moving parts and it causes significant damage. <laughs> Put in a separate container that is just for glass only, like the cardboard is, and the organics. Um, we're not equipped to collect it because we don't collect manually. If we were collecting manually and we had a separate truck that could take just the glass, then in theory it could. So some municipalities do collect manually and they have one or more trucks. So it has to do with your collection method. So we, because we're automated, one bin glass is removed from that stream and you can take it to a depot or another method but and it's still recycled under recycle bc but because we don't have the ability to have another collection go out and do it manually we cannot collect glass curbside so that's why we don't collect glass at the marina yeah and manual collection is great for reducing contamination because we have people that can actually see what's going on what's in the bins but the other aspect of manual collection is it is incredibly difficult um, physically. And so what happens is those employees that are doing that, you know, uh, you know, we, for example, when we were manual, people were lifting 1400 carts a day, every single day. And so the wear on the body, the, you know, the claims that are made and, and just the, the livelihood of that person. Um, so it's just, it's not, um, a feasible long-term means of collecting in most places are. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we'll do one more question then I'm gonna move on. <laughs> okay, I was just um, thinking that I often put um, cereal boxes and maybe ice cream cone um, boxes yeah. uh, in with the cardboard recycle. Is that wrong? Um, no, it, it'll end up at the right place. So this is considered okay. box board. Yeah. Okay. And then cardboard is like the corrugated cardboard yes. mm -hmm. so yeah you can put this in the blue card though oh, it yeah, yeah it's paper or box there but okay. yeah it'll still end up getting recycled it's not going to get pulled out and, okay yeah okay okay last question recycling is what recycling is what is it should be recycled but ends up having to go to the garbage um we get audited by recycle bc um regularly and then they let us know how much on average of that load. So of course, it's just a sample from one truck from one day. So it's not um, extensive, but, and they let us know how much was missorted. And can, yeah, so it could have been that it was supposed to go to a depot and instead it was put in the blue cart that it was bagged or nested. And so it couldn't be sorted out appropriately. So it may have been recyclable, but couldn't have been recycled. Or it could be materials that were not supposed to go in the blue cart at all, but were are Um, So currently, um, we vary from month to month when we're audited. Um, right now, Nanaimo um, has been mandated by Recycle BC to do a CRP, so Contamination Remediation Plan, because when we signed the agreement back in 2013 with Recycle BC, we agreed to not exceed contamination rate of 3%. Um, but our contamination rate for last year was 7.56%. So to put that in perspective, 3% is very, very low. Very low. There, I don't know that there is a municipality in BC that has achieved that. And any municipalities that are close to that or have achieved that are typically they're manually collecting because it's that um, the 
those eyes on every single card that's going in. Um, so we are working to increase education and tools and reaching the public because, like I said before, I completely appreciate the confusion with the program because it's not a clear black and white. It's not, oh, if it's recyclable, it goes in the blue card. There's all these nuanced rules that come into play. And so it is confusing. So our goal this year is to really amp up the education, the resources and the tools available so that we can reduce the amount of contamination that we have. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> I think plastic is a little more um, straightforward. Um, as far as sorting, I think it's a little bit easier than the paper. So this is like laundry detergent, dish detergent, uh, spray bottles, those are the to-go drink cups, uh, plastic clamshells, um, plastic berry containers. These are the plastic to-go or takeout um, containers. And then the large, like sometimes there's veggie trays in there or baked goods. Um, so it'd be lotion, shampoo, mouthwash, body wash. Um, up in the top is just a large yogurt tub and then the small yogurt cups, peanut butter. This is a five, or no, it's not five gallons, sorry. It's just the, the small, what is it? Five quarts or something, kale. Um, and then the nursery plant pots. So these are the types of plastics that when I say, um, the rigid plastic that keeps its shape. This is the type of plastic that's accepted. So if you buy something new and you know it's got that rigid plastic that you have to get like scissors or like the jaws of life to get into, <laughs> that kind of plastic is also, it's packaging, right? You can put it into your blue cart. Um, another exciting update that Recycle BC um, did in January was they will now accept plastic cutlery plastic straws, and then plastic uh, single-use bowls, cups, um, plates like that you might use for a picnic. So those items can also go into the blue cart. So that's really exciting because before they just had to go in the landfill. Um, I can take a couple questions about the plastics. I think they're a little bit easier to kind of uh, determine. All the uh, clam shells, can they be stacked inside each other? Yes, as long as they're not in the bag um, and they're all the same kind of, so it's obvious that they're all the same, um, then yeah, all like material go together. And just rinse plastic plant pots? Yeah, you can just give them a quick, as long as there's not a lot of residue in there, then, you know, like don't keep the soil in. Um, but yeah, just give them a quick rinse. You No need to scrub. Motor oil rolls. 10 liters. Whatever. And you, how do you like can you recycle that or do you have to separate because it's not organic? Yeah, so the I mean not motor oil itself, but the containers. Yeah, the container it should so that's one of the ones where I would have to double check on that one. And pour it down your drink. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so let me get back to you on motor oil containers because yeah, those kinds of automotive fluids and things if they should the other thing is is any retailer that sells you something return for them you should they should be able to take it back so even I don't know plastic let's say the plastic tins can we take that back to let's say home deep or road loan road and lows or whatever you should be able to but you can also take those to depots um and it should be in the waste wise app so like I said you know, I work in the industry and I don't even have everything committed to memory. So let me, the automotive fluids, I will confirm because I don't want to give anybody inaccurate information. Um, and then I can forward that information um, with, along with those links to the resources and tools. Plastic medication. Um, so yeah, those, as long as they're empty, those can go in the blue cart. So that was plastic medication or prescription pill. I mean, I would recommend making sure your information isn't on it anymore. Um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, and then we'll do the next one. Okay. So we don't have to take the labels off? No, you do not need to take the labels off. No, just a quick rinse, make sure there's not a lot of excess residue in there. Uh, but again, it doesn't need to be clean enough that you could use it to eat or drink for, you know, for something else. It just needs to be, majority of the residue needs to be removed. 
Okay, so metal products and packaging. Um, so the thin gauge uh, tins, because they are packaging, you buy, you know, Christmas cookies or something in a special little tin at the grocery store, it's still packaging. So it can be recycled in the blue cart. Um, aerosols, as long as they're empty and not hazardous. So spray paint, no um, lubrication or flammable, anything that's got like the flammable or the hazardous poisonous symbols on them is a no. Well, sorry, flammable, hairspray will be flammable, any aerosol is flammable. Uh, but the poisonous um, materials are not accepted, but hairspray, as long as it's completely empty, meaning it's not um, under pressure anymore, then that can be accepted. Um, that's just a regular can and then like the soup cans. Um, so those can go in, just give them a quick rinse. So frying pans, cast iron, or Teflon? No. Nope. That would all be scrap metal. And so it can go to depots that accept scrap metal. Um, or if it's still usable, it can be donated. Um, if it's not usable, then depot. A tin foil, of course, I reuse when I can, but yeah, tin foil can be accepted in the blue cart. So this is one of those ones where it's a perfect example of how it's uh, a little bit of a, it's a bit confusing. So <laughs> aluminum foil is one that it is accepted, even though it is a product, right? You're buying it, but it's a packaging like you're using it to contain something in some way. Um, if you've used it to cook and there's a lot of food residue on it, then it's garbage. If it's pretty well clean, then you can put it in the recycling in the blue cart um, for collection. Um, and a lot of the times with things like that is that Cycle BC can't go, oh, you bought that aluminum foil, we're going to get rid of that. Oh, that aluminum foil came on yogurt, we'll keep that, right? They, they, the sorting isn't that sophisticated. So they always accepted aluminum foil, but they most recently actually now have it under contract. So they have a, an agreement where they can take, officially take aluminum foil. What about uh, paper labels on tin cans? Should we take them off? If they come up easily, not a problem, take them off. But if, if you're fighting with it, it's okay. Just put it in, yeah. So, sorry, Eddie, is that what's confusing to me is that, you know, it's like, if, if for example, we were labels on a plastic container and the plastic is going to be recycled, uh, what happens to the paper part of it? Does it just get burned off in the yep. process? Or, I mean, what happens to the other bits and pieces? Yeah, so if you think about how, um, say, for example, like a soup can is recycled, yeah, it's intense heat, so that paper. But they have, depending on the processing involved in that um, end market uh, product, it's it's completely different from one to the next. But what Recycled BC has said is that it's okay. So I don't have the details on how each step of each process goes. Um, but a lot of times it could be high pressure wash, it could be um, burnt off, it could be yeah things like that. So, but what they've said is it's accepted. So. Because uh, parchment paper is has silicone in it. And so it's not really paper, it's actually, I would consider it garbage because it's silicone and silicone isn't. Yeah, um, under Recycle BC, it does say that they accept parchment paper. Mm -hmm. um, so we can double check that with the, but I, I've heard that before, mm -hmm. but I mean, I checked my, yeah, I checked my um, parchment paper at home after I heard that and they all said 100% paper. So, I it's not confirmed for me that there's silicone in that material. Um, otherwise, that yeah, it hasn't been disclosed to me that there is, and that it needs to be removed or treated separately because it's actually accepted in our compost. Yeah. So if you have any information on, um, well, if you buy parchment paper, parchment that I buy says it's siliconized. Oh, mine does not. Mine right. does. No, because the kind I buy, it, it does say siliconized. Yeah, and um, yeah, if it, if you do purchase parchment paper that's siliconized, then yeah, that would not be paper. It has to be 100% paper. Yeah, yeah. Tin can lids inside tin. Do glass jar lids go in metal or leave with jars? Um, they can, the jar lids can go in. 
um, the because they'll even if you go to the depot, they'd have to be taken mm -hmm. off. So glass stays with glass and metal stays with metal. Um, the tin can lids, if it's tin, keep it, no need to remove it or anything. Um, if it's a tin can that has a plastic lid, just pop the lid off. Just try to keep the separate uh, material streams separate. So mm -hmm. plastic and metal separate, paper and plastic separate. Okay, so we'll move on to the next. So I've mentioned previously that um, BC is actually a leader in Canada as far as end markets for our recyclable material. So there's a lot of information out there right now. And I mean, it, the intention is good is to educate people on the fact that recycling is not always recycled. However, in BC, majority, significant majority, um, over 90% of our recycling is recycled. 98% um, of plastics that are recycled in B, in the uh, Recycle BC program are recycled in BC. So um, there's kind of this narrative that's um, developed over the past couple of years that, you know, what's the point in recycling? You know, it all just goes to the landfill or we ship it overseas to a less fortunate nation and then they dump it in their garbage or it ends up in the waterways. So with Recycle BC's program, that is not the case. We are not shipping large quantities of recycling overseas. Um, so yeah, these are just some of Recycle BC's information, um, part of their campaign to educate or challenge um, misinformation. So 90% of collected material is managed by recycling. Uh, recycling, as we know, keeps it out of our waterways, out of our oceans. Um, almost all the plastic soaps that I've mentioned, 98%, um, is um, processed in BC. Uh, I believe it's actually Richmond. Um, soft plastics have to go to the depot, not thrown out. They will get turned into other products if they go to the depot. Um, and yeah, uh, there's we recycle a lot more items in BC than other provinces do, um, and so we're we're doing a lot of good work. It's not perfect; it's a complicated system, but I think it's worth worth doing for sure. Um, and so yeah, the government does not fund. So that's what I talked about before. Recycle BC operates as a stewardship program, so it's the businesses that sell, manufacture, produce enable you to buy the products, they're the ones that fund the recycling. So they manage that with Recycle BC. And so the city of Nanaimo actually essentially operates as a contractor and we collect. We have agreed with them that we will collect the material and the material we collect will be less than 3% contaminated. That's that's our rule. Um, yeah. You know, we've been taught about the three R's. I, I'd like to add a fourth R, and that's rethink. Yes. Because we're doing a good job with the recyclable, but we've forgotten about the reducing. We've forgotten about yes, the use. Yes, I agree. And um, um, and I think we also have put the onus on the individual, the onus, yes. which everybody seems to be doing a good job of. But really, we should be focusing on the big box stores, mm -hmm. you know, like Costco, what are you doing to require your suppliers yes. to reduce the yes. packaging accept? Absolutely. And I think we, as homeowners, we could also put mm -hmm. pressure on Christie's or London Drugs or asking them, mm -hmm. any business owner should be responsibly thinking about what is their plan. Yeah. So mm -hmm. are we doing that on a citywide or regional level, sort of trying to go the next step about re reusing things? Yes. It seems a pity to put plastic pill containers that have been used once. Yeah. It's worse than a straw. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I can, I mean, I can speak to the city of Nanaimo under, like, the department I work in, um, public works, sanitation, and recycling, um, and so, I mean, my role is zero waste coordinator, so the idea is that we want to push to have less waste produced, right, so sorting your waste appropriately is kind of the last effort that you can make, um, but it, like you said, it comes before that, so it's the the reducing, reusing, recycling, but also, you know, repurposing, repurposing repairing, um, thinking, you know, do uh, we have some education that's going to go out for school age children that introduces them to the circular economy and the zero waste hierarchy and how we can kind of get recycling sits pretty low on the zero waste hierarchy, right? Like it's one of the last 
efforts that we can make to reduce the amount of actual garbage going in the landfill, but there's lots of other things. So education is a big part of that. And the city, um, we are pushing for that. I know my manager, his biggest thing is we want to reduce the amount of waste that people are producing so that we, you know, not just that we're collecting, but that we're producing. So. But you're, you're talking about, you know, the retailers, but take it one step further. It's the manufacturers oh. packaging. That yeah, and there is pressure on that as well. So, for example, um, like Amazon's not included under the EPR, and the amount of packaging that results from Amazon deliveries is significant. And we saw a very large increase in the amount of recycling over the pandemic years um, because there's so much more online shopping. So, yeah, those are definitely there. The, these are issues that. Um, our department is aware of, and my manager is definitely, um, he's pushing for that recognition, pushing Recycle BC also to put, to expand their um, arrangements uh, to things like Amazon. And my, my quick second question, I've watched over in Harbor and truck bags in and takes all the containers and put them all in the same truck. Why are we why are we taking the time to separate it when it's all getting bumped into one truck? You don't have to anymore. You don't have to anymore. Oh. So yeah, paper, plastic, and metal all goes yeah. in the same yeah. blue cart. Just one bag. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So looking at other systems, so yeah. you can't make be done in one year or hot water tank that lasts five years and that's it. Yes. And so that's part of the, the circular economy, which we're not, we're a part of a linear economy. We it's take, make, waste. We take the resources, we make the product, and then it's garbage. And right now, so closing that loop, um, this is part of closing that loop, right? This is this is a step we can take right now is the recycling, but it's it's not the answer. Closing that loop is, I mean, that's something. I believe quite passionately in is that it, you know, this is an important role, a thing that we can do right now, but it's not the answer. No. Um, so speaking of packaging, um, I'm not sure if it's like provincial wide or what exactly established or created the businesses to not be able to give you like one one ton used plastic bags that just got eliminated. And retailers now have to give you paper bags or you bring your own bags kind of thing. Um, is that not, is that, I don't know if that's provincial wide or is that just. So the federal government has started banning single use plastics. However, due to the way that legislation between federal, provincial, municipal works, um, there are some challenges with actually making that um, where every province has to do that. So Nanaimo has taken it upon itself to create the plastic bag ban uh, bylaw. So that's something that Nanaimo has done independently. So like if you go up to Parksville, you'll get a plastic bag. Um, yeah, so. Can I one that do sell clam shells and all of those plastic packagings be banned from being allowed to use those packages? It, it, it's part of the single use plastics um, bans, which is an initiative that the federal government has started. But yeah, it's um, the other side of that is that there has to be alternative options. Um, so yeah, that's not necessarily within my scope, um, but I know right with Nanaimo Zero Waste goals that banning more and more single waste or single use items um, is just, yeah, because of the way that the regulations overlap and the actual, it, yeah, it's a little bit complicated. So um, yeah, I'm not sure what the next single. Right, just one more question about that. So what does happen to all of that packaging from uh, Amazon, for example, the plastic packaging? The soft plastics go to the depot and the cardboard goes into the blue cart. So it'll still, it would all be depot items. Yeah, depot. yeah. It's just that Amazon doesn't actually pay Recycle BC to recycle those items, um, but Recycle BC still recycles them. So they, yeah, they they should be included in that stewardship.
you know what they make out of soft plastics because I've seen piles and piles and piles of soft plastics in my husband's old company, and um, they weren't being used. Yeah, so, I am. Um, what is thank you. I'll get to that um, shortly. So we'll keep moving along and I can let you know what the end markets are for yeah. all the streams. So right. paper, plastic, um, soft and rigid, as well as uh, the metal. Um, so we'll go to the next slide. Uh, yeah, so this is kind of a brief overview of the recycling system that was um uh, Recycled EC operates. So, material we're um, City of Nanaimo is part of step one, collecting the materials from homes and depots, um, and step two, material being delivered to a receiving or sorting facility, and that's where City of Nanaimo's participation or role in that process ends. Um, so, once the materials are taken to a receiving or sorting facility, so here it's taken to Waste Connections Canada. Um, GFL takes it there, um, what they collect there as well. Um, the material is dumped out, it's filled into a truck, and then the truck is shipped to the mainland. Um, and, oh no, sorry, the truck is shipped to Shamanus, and then there's a, a sorting facility in Shamanus, and then, so step three, sorted. Um, step four, the material, once it's sorted, they're baled, and then they're shipped to the next step. So paper will go one place, rigid plastics will go to another, metal will go to another. Um, so most of the uh, end markets that we manage are in BC, but some are um, further out in North America. Um, so we'll skip to the next. Can we just reemphasize one more time that this is what happens to the blue boxes in the marina, not what happens on Protection Island, because we have a unique collection and separation of all our stuff goes directly to regional recycling. So uh, this actually, if it goes to regional recycling, this is where what happens with yeah. that. I'm so interested in that, but I just want to be, I mean, I'm learning so much. Yeah, but this will be the same process for regional recycling. Okay, I just want to be clear because I'm getting confused that on Protection Island, all of our stuff does not go into a blue bin and then go to regional cycling. It goes directly. Therefore, our sorting process is somewhat different to this. And so we'll speak to that after, but it's so amazing to find out yeah. where it's all going to begin. But I just, I'm getting a little confused, so I just... Yeah, this everything that I'm discussing is the blue cart is are the carts that are available to you at the marina. Um, reach this is how Recycle BC operates, and regional recycling is a Recycle BC depot. So their materials will go through the exact this process as well. Um, so yeah, we can skip to the next. So on that note, 98.6% of households in BC have access to depots. So regional recycling would be one of those depots. Um, there's over 176 communities that have partnered with Recycle BC. Um, heck of a lot of households that participate and over four, four and a half million people are served um, both so this is curbside and then multifamily and Nanaimo doesn't collect from multifamily so we'll I'll talk about that further but so next slide so post collection so these are all the different receiving facilities so they this is where the materials are collected um so we have a few on the islands and then material recovery facility so that's where the materials are actually um pulled out and then utilized for something else um so the sorting facilities that I had mentioned previously use all different kinds of technology. Some are a little bit um, older and don't have access to all of the same um, technology, but uh, so I went to GFL in Richmond and they do, they have all this fancy stuff. So they have optical sorters. So that's where they're using cameras and um, that kind of information technology to be able to identify different materials. Uh, ballistic separator, so that's where the compressed air is utilized to blast up through the material if it catches the paper and then they fly up and they get caught uh, from the glass cleanup system. So that's getting the glass out of before it's getting um, going into all the different uh, conveyor belts and things like that and causing 
damage. And yeah, it's pretty well all automated. There's very, very, very few actual people physically doing any kind of um, engagement with the material. So they're primarily there to pull out big contamination. And I've seen all kinds of things like pillows and tents and barbecues and propane cylinders and just mm -hmm. like all kinds, all kinds. Yeah, cool. Um. Oh. So the Richmond Material Recovery Facility, I know the text here is really small, but this is all on the Recycled BC webpage as well. But so uh, multi-stream recycling, um, they do paper and then containers like the plastic containers and things like that. Um, they use weigh scales um, and the New West Minister um, Material Recovery. So this is just for single and multi-stream recycling. Um, they have waste. So these are just examples of the two different uh, on the lower mainland uh, material recovery uh, facilities. So same process again, the material sorted. Once it's sorted, it's baled. Um, and the baling is kind of crazy. It's super, super compact and it's under incredible tension. Um, our facility here, I was there when they were baling and then you can hear the material flexing in the bail and it's like creaking it's a little bit like <laughs> and then these bales are sold to um end markets to be made into new um products or packaging um yes so um recycle bc they approve and verify all okay so they know where um, the recovered material once it's bailed and they know where it's going and what it gets turned into. So that's one of the other things that's important to Re Recycle BC is making sure they know what happens to the products after they're recovered. Um, so metal, uh, most metal and paper stay in Canada and some of it goes into like a tin is one of the biggest ones that does go into the US. Um, so it's shipped by rail to go and be processed there. Um, but otherwise, most products do stay um, either BC, Canada, and then um, kind of stretching out into the US a little bit. So we'll go to the next one. So, um, so this is, these are the end products for, sorry, end markets for um, the blue cart collected materials. Um, so you can't see the very top, but so hard plastic containers. Um, so they get turned back into cleaning product containers. So it could be laundry detergents or um, kitchen all-purpose cleaner, things like that. They get turned back into nursery pots. So you recycle it, gets turned back into one. And then more food containers. Um, so that's a... Uh, and then metal cans. So they get turned into new sheet metal to be made into new products. Um, paper cartons, new paper towels, tissues, napkins, kind of those kinds of paper products. Not a lot of it is uh, paper cartons are not really turned into paper, but um, still into paper products. And then cardboard. So cardboard gets recycled into more cardboard, pizza boxes, moving boxes, craft paper, paper grocery bags. Um, so paper's one of the ones that's super easy to, well, easier to recycle. Um, and then if we go to the next, yeah, so these are the depot items only. So if you take your items to the depot, this is what happens to them. So glass um, gets turned either into new bottles, it can be used in construction um, as construction aggregate, or it gets turned into sand plastic uh, material. So I think one of the um, processing facilities that does make the sand blasting material is actually in Quinell. Um, and then the plastic shopping bags, they get turned into plastic pellets, and then those plastic pellets are used to make new plastic products. Um, so it could be any kind of plastic product. So uh, the list is pretty extensive there. Um, and then the other plastics, they actually get made into clothing. So sometimes you'll see when you purchase something like this was used to be a water bottle or things like that. <laughs> um, those are the types of um, clothing that are made from the, the those types of plastics. So I'm just going to briefly go over the organics is a much less complicated program. Um, so this section will be pretty quick. Um, so this is our organics green carts, same place, the marina. Um, so we'll go to the next slide. So very simple process, collected, 
delivered to the um, Convertus down at Duke Point. It's processed from there. And then they have, I think, two companies that they work with that use that um, as a, an additive to um, increase the nutrient quality of soil that they produce. But question about or, or organics and, and there's some products now that are compostable. Is that often it has to be a high heat? Yes, I'll get into that. Okay. Yes. Okay, so well, as far as items that are accepted in our green cart program, food scraps, coffee grounds, filters, tea bags, bread dough, pasta, grains, paper towels, paper plates that are saturated with food residue, soiled paper and cardboard, same thing, soiled with food residue, leaves, grass, and light trimmings. So we do allow the BPI certified compostable bin liners but we don't allow any other compostable plastics because so composting facilities are not standardized across municipalities. So every single municipality that has a composting collection service has a different facility uh, with different regulations, uh, timeline, the whole thing is completely different municipality to municipality. So our um, compost processing center, Convertus Group. Um, so they, the turnover rate is quite quick. So the compostable plastic, they require, some of them, as you mentioned, require a certain temperature to be reached for a certain length of time or just a certain length of time within the um, process for it to break down fully. So our process, like I said, has quite a quick turnover rate. They're able to process a lot of material relatively quickly. And the compostable plastics do not break down in that time frame. And so the end product will have pieces of plastic in it. So compostable plastics are not accepted. So takeaway containers, utensils that say compostable, they're not compostable anywhere. Um, so if you are better off the bamboo cutlery, absolutely compostable. So you can use that if you need a single use. Um, and then as far as um, plates, cups, bowls, if you need a single use, you're better to go with paper um, because the compostable plastic, it's just, it, there's not a lot of places that it can truly be composted. So it's unfortunate because it sounds like a great idea, um, but in reality, it's actually posing a lot more risk or problems because it also cannot be recycled. So if it ends up in the blue cart, mm -hmm. then it's contamination, but it's hard to identify from the other plastics. So it ends up with the plastic and then it degrades the quality of the plastics. So creating more products isn't necessarily helping. Um, same with the biodegradable plastic. So biodegradable plastic is different from compostable plastic. Biodegradable or bioplastics are designed to biodegrade in a landfill or um, something of that nature, um, but they will not compost and they're not recyclable. So if you see a biodegradable or bioplastic or compostable, best to just avoid it if you can, in my opinion, <laughs> it's just complicated. Um, some municipalities are moving away from allowing any kinds of compostable bin lines. I don't think that we've reached that point yet, but plastics are the number one contaminant that we find in our compostable materials um, at the processing facility. So they try to remove them as best they can. Um, but yeah. Can we not make an insert a burning process so that the system? Um, Kurt, well, so how the system actually works. So when the compost materials, the organics, they go to the facility, um, it's a big open kind of, uh, looks like a warehouse. They dump the materials, they scoop up the materials, they load them into um, bays. They're able to monitor the humidity, the temperature, and then they have air that gets pushed in to the um, pile from underneath. And then they have sprinkler system over top that takes the leachate that comes out and then puts it back on top so that they can maintain a certain moisture and uh, and then that they can control the process to an extent, but they are not equipped to be able to put in any kind of furnace type situation. That's a much more 
industrialized. Like this is still relatively similar to backyard composting, but it does have some um, added technology to be able to control it more so than backyard. Um, but it's it's not an industrialized process by any means. So to the yeah, so I won't cover any of this, but this is valleys, but I just wanted to um, I guess reiterate that the topics that I covered have just been for the bins that you can access at the marina. And that valley has informed me that there's the other alternative is the protection island supply. Um, and so that's another alternative if you would rather do that. And my understanding is she will speak to that. So we'll skip the next two, three to the city of Minnesota. So I know I've answered lots of questions, but I'm sure there are still some questions. If there's time, I can answer. But if not, I know we're... we have we really have to move on. Valley Henny Pennell uh, moved to Protection Island with Rick Scott in 1999, and has been the volunteer recycling coordinator for the past decade. Our recycling program evolved out of a shared need that was not being met regularly until Will Chadwick arrived on the island with PI Supply. Valley has a background in communications, so undertook to help inform Islanders about the service and keep them updated while taking some of the administrative load off Will. She sends out weekly email reminders and posts recycling dates on the bulletin boards and answers a variety of questions, mostly from new residents. She'll tell us more of the evolution of our recycling from a collective um, effort called Jabberwocky, and some of us remember that. Junk away. Junk away. Oh, so, oh. Hi. Yeah, Jabberwocky, Junk away. Yeah, so Junk away. And, it, uh, and uh, she will introduce Will Chadwick, who will suggest how we can keep it running smoothly. How does that sound? Here we go, Valerie. Thank you. Yeah. So speak up. Yeah, you speak up. Okay. So thanks for all being here. Um, I was going to give a bit more history on this, but because we're running long, I'm going to cut to the chase. But here's a few pictures of what it looked like before Will came on the business on island and took over Sorry. recycling. Uh, the Junk Away Initiative was because when we moved here the roads were lined with appliances and old water heaters because the only way to get things off was um, Larry's barge, which was six to $800 an hour. So nobody would bother. So a group of women got together and decided how to fix that. There is history before that because the Lions used to have an annual um, spring takeaway, but when recycling entered, they didn't have the manpower to sort. So they had stopped which is why we had this accumulation. And we had several junk aways. The first one, the first one, we went to the city and said, we need, we have this problem. And they gave us a one-time barge with two bins and we cleared up a lot of the backlog. And the, the whole island was a parade of available vehicle loaded up with, just keep going. Yeah, loaded, up, every time like, oh, loaded up with all this stuff. This is not the first one. This is the metal junk away in 2005. We'd already had the city junk away of two bins. We did a metal and a wood and then eventually an auto and boat junk away before Will came. And as you can see, this is what our island looked like. I'm just gonna let it run while I keep talking. So then um, when Will arrived with his barge on wheels, uh, the junk away committee decided that this was a great way to meet the same need without junk aways. And so we took the remaining funds that we had collected, gave it to Will to buy bins, and he initiated grocery delivery, at that time not online, not to COVID did we get online ordering, um, recycling and garbage. And we established that recycling only needed to be every two weeks, though garbage had to go off every week because that was how the quantities were. So um, 2005, junk away. And before that, Fraser Lee and uh, Bob Lawson had tried little individual efforts to get our junk off the island, but it wasn't enough. 
So Will came along and as far as I'm concerned, saved the day for our recycling. But our system is ever evolving. And at the time that this started, we didn't, when we first came, there weren't even bulletin boards, let alone pro aisles. So I undertook to figure out how do we communicate amongst ourselves how we do this. That is how I became the volunteer recycling coordinator. And I just still am. And what I basically do is I send out weekly reminders when there's a change in what happens with recycling. I update people. I send it to pro aisle and a list of non pro aisle people that um, to try and keep them updated. And I post the recycling dates on the bulletin board because it's confusing because it's every two weeks. So first thing I want to say is everything that Will collects goes directly to regional recycling. So unlike the blue bins, where you have to be scrupulous about certain things, there's certain differences here on our island that make it much easier. So think of PI Supplies Recycling as a mobile regional recycling unit. So here's some of the things I observed during that very informative talk. First of all, we do not collect organics. If you have organics, you either compost them yourself or you can take them to the bins in the city, in Jabawaki, or you put them in the garbage. But we do not collect organics. We tried to figure out how to do it. It's a difficult thing to do. Um, so we don't do that. We, however, collect everything else that regional recycling will take. I'm gonna give you a brief list. As of this week, crinkle and non-crinkle packaging, plastic packaging, all goes together. We no longer have to separate it, yay. It goes together with, I'm just gonna read this list. It's from the new Pina newsletter. We just wrote it. Um, grocery bags, outer bags, product wraps for diapers, paper towels, soft drink wrappers, bubble wrap, fruit and veggie bags, Ziplocs, Ziplocs, you don't have to take the little zip off anymore. Crinkly bags and wrappers, non-food protective packaging, woven plastic packaging and overwrap, not included, combo plastic and paper, plastic strapping, six pack rings, plastics labeled biodegradable, compostable or oxo degradable. That all can go in together now, plastic and non-critical. The other great thing that we can all put together are containers, but they have to be rinsed. Plastic bottles, caps, lids, jugs, tubs, food trays and clamshells, garden pots and trays, plastic pails less than 25 liters, metal cans, spiral wound juice cans, tetra packs, soup, which are soup boxes, foil takeout containers, Tin foil, empty aerosol cans, non-refundable cartons for cream, like half and half, all in one bunch. And they can all go directly to regional recycling like that. So only in February did this half and half cream thing come up and people were driving me crazy asking, which ones can we send to the lions? And what I was told was if, if it, you can drink it directly out of the bottle, this, if you drink half and half, that's your problem. <laughs> But if it's designed to be drunk directly out of the out of the bottle, it goes in the lion's refundable. And often it has written on it, refundable, I think. Uh, and if it's something that has to be diluted to be used or be poured into something else to be used, it goes in the recycling. That's the best description I've heard so far of how that works. And, and from the bottle collectors, I really heard a lot and uh, we'll speak to that but it really is hard for them to fish out the things that are not supposed to be in the refundables. So technically now it's just sort of into two things. No, I'm not done, but uh, those are the two big major, yeah, major two things. Big major yeah, things. but here's all the other things that you can send with PI supply. Glass containers, bottles and jars, no dishes, ceramics, broken windows or unbroken windows, mirrors. The lids, best to go with containers, but if they're on the jars, Will tells me that. They don't seem to mind. Because there's people at regional recycling that are accepting this, mm -hmm. not machines. That's the basic difference. Okay, paper, newspaper, magazines, and cardboard, no books. Contain shredded paper, 
in a bag or box different from the blue boxes where you can, you have to put it in a clear plastic, you don't here. You can put it in a, a similarly recyclable box or paper bag. I mean, if you do put it in a plastic bag, they'll just dump it out. But just to make that distinction that, you know, I keep a paper bag for two weeks and just put all the paper and the magazines and the newspapers in it and put that bigger bag into my large recycling bag. And that's the other thing is all these little divisions can go in one big bag. And that bag needs to be see-through so that PI Supply can see you've sorted it. If you have not sorted it, they're not taking it anymore because they don't have the manpower. When you could, last week, the recycling barge was so overflowing. I couldn't believe it. It came past my door and I was like, whoa, where did all that come from? And then they have to go to the recycling depot and take it out of our bags and put it in the appropriate bins there. So our job is to make it as easy as possible for them to do that job. They don't charge us an arm and a leg to do it. And believe me, they do not make a profit on recycling. It is a service to our community um, because it's so labor intensive. Okay, so also they will take foam packaging, separated white and colored, please. Meat trays, take the pad out. Um, take out containers and cups, cushion packaging. No blue or pink insulation, packing chips, peanuts, or foam noodles. All this is going to be in the Pina newsletter that's coming out shortly, so yay. Batteries, big or small, and I'll get Will to talk about how he likes them. That includes golf cart and, golf and car batteries. Yeah. yeah. Light bulbs and light fixtures. Appliances. Now, there's a charge for some of these bigger things, but it's reasonable. I mean, if you had to barge it off yourself, Believe me, it's reasonable. Heavy metal like hot water tanks, hunks of metal, wire, and chain. Paints must be in the original container and have a readable label and not be commercial grade. And electronics, CDs, thumb drives, gaming devices, appliances. And if you're uncertain about any of those things, you just have to go to regionalrecycling.ca and they have a, just an excellent description of what they will take, which is what Will will take. Okay, so questions about that. Will's awesome. Yeah. I just wanna say how different life was on the island before we had PI supply, not just from the point of view of how unsightly it was, but from the fact that um, we just had nowhere to turn. There were no alternatives. It was Larry's big barge or carry it off the island. And it was a huge problem. And to the credit of Junkaway, the women that put that together really alerted us all to how big the problem was. I mean, it was after four or five Junkaways, we had just barely cleared the backlog. And I know it builds up again. And if anyone's interested in a car and boat, volunteer and we'll figure out how to do it. But it it's a lot of work and it will take a team of people. So I think that's just about every, I, mean, I, I made a few notes, let me make sure I've said everything I wanna say. Yeah, it's really important to know that we can take batteries. If it is not sorted and if it is not clean, we'll won't take it. Because our crew, our recycling crew has their hands so full on those alternate Thursdays, their day is so long just to get it collected, get it to Nanaimo and get it sorted, it's amazing. So thanks, Will. And now Will's going to talk to us about some new changes that I don't even know about yet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That. Say, I do this. The reason I volunteer to do this is because Will's administrative load already just to handle all the other parts of his business, not including our recycling, groceries, and... Um, What's garbage. And garbage is huge. You can only imagine how many emails he gets every week. So I volunteered to do this one because communications is my business. And I figured that when there was something to be said, I could be clear about it. Secondly, if he gets tired of doing this because it's too much work, <laughs> we'll lose him. So it's in my own best interests. 
And it's quite simple. It doesn't take a lot of time. So please don't send me 100 emails this week asking me, <laughs> asking me questions that you can answer from going to the regional recycling website. That's all I ask. Yeah. And if you have a question like, do you have a large load and you're not sure if he can take it, by all means then email me or email Will. Yeah. And I, if I can't answer it, I will pass it to him. But really what we're trying to do is make his job easier because he's making our lives better. Well, yeah, you're, you're a huge help for me. And I am committed to the island. I will keep doing this no matter what for as long as I can to, to make all this happen. So I think everybody sort of knows the process. You email me, you buy stickers, you put it on the stuff. I send the guys around. They, they have a, uh, a plastic pipe bowl now so we can sort of, without stopping, reach out with the garbage <laughs> without ripping it and get it in the bowl. Yeah, it's, it's quite quick and it's efficient and we like to then go to the Recycle Depot with that and sort it there because like Raylene was saying, there's so much stuff that's different and confusing every single week that we're there. There's something we're like, does this go here? Does this go there? But we have guys standing right there that can tell us, hey, no, this goes here, this goes there. And even if it's not recycling, we still easily deal with it because it becomes garbage, unfortunately. So if it doesn't go there, I, I just drop it at the dumpster downtown like the dumpster that we pay for so we can i'll pick it up if it's there i'll pick it up and if people want to know what is like to do it perfectly i can continue like post and say this is wrong this is wrong this is wrong but whatever it is we'll pick it up and then we'll sort it if it gets too bad i'll say something and and we'll figure it out but we're doing better aren't we? it's really amazing and so the the guys that are working on thursday are new they were quite surprised like when they had to when they knew they had to do recycling that day, they weren't that into it because it's like we got to go through all these people, all these people's like stuff. But when they did it, they were like, it's amazing. It's amazing. Like the Islanders do a really great job. But there is always a couple things that are wrong. And it's and it's always different. So I brought it up. Keep your tricks close to the mic because okay. I usually walk back off the machine. Okay. So I brought a couple things that were new and wrong and just, just things to show people. So this is what you were talking about with plastic and paper together. So we can take this bubble wrap, but when it's together in here, we can't take it, right? So it's garbage. Garbage. So it's garbage. Thank you. But this we can take. Canada Post right here. With the bubble wrap inside. Yeah. And recycle it. So metal like this, this doesn't go in with plastic. Like so, uh, our metal can go with the hard plastic. This doesn't go in there, but they do have a metal bin there. But it's it's the metal bin is probably about this big, so it's only good for smaller types of metal, like not a swing set or something like that. We're not going to take that. Um, Which I told you we have a swing set. Yeah, and made you to do it for junk. Okay, yeah. kind of junk so to add to the confusion, confusion, this is plastic now. So this often comes with uh, styrofoam packaging, like when you're buying a new appliance or something. But the styrofoam in there, then there'd be this too. This is actually plastic. It doesn't go with styrofoam. Yeah, it's like as of the last time we were there, at, with plastic, not styrofoam. This, not styrofoam. Yes. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you guys want to look at that. So styrofoam breaks apart more. That sort of stays together. That's garbage. You're so helpful, Will. You don't go. <laughs> yeah. Deep, like, time I go there, I can maybe grab something that's wrong. Maybe I can post a picture of it on Pro Al and someone can see it. I, you know, can take all the names off everything. <laughs> so here's some examples of. About that, we would. I would allow the guy to take to the dumpster afterwards because it's too much for them. So I don't know who this is, but here's the different types of plastic. This would be like the crinkle but plastic can all go that goes with this type of plastic now. That it can all go with one, but not with this. So this goes with metal. Oh, and that's pretty you know, rigid. Oh, yeah, right. So. Plastic crinkle and non-crinkle is one thing. Yes. And then all the rest of them are metal. Yes. Separate. So, so the way this is, you can see there's a decent amount of sorting to go through here. If the guys tell me, hey, this is no good, this is garbage, 
how that goes garbage. And then you might see this in the dumpster downtown. But it's not sorted. It's just, it's just, you know, it's on the verge, right? Like, you know, they, what makes sense for them to grab through some of it, but at the same time, too, you know, I'm trying not to. There's paper inside here. Or no, that's plastic. That's plastic. But it's, it's to me, this is on the verge of really not being worth it and me allowing the guys to say, hey, this is garbage, right? And then you might see something like this that looks like recycling in the dumpster downtown. This would be another one where there's paper here, and this is why the clear bag, bag is helpful. You can see there's, there's, there's plastic. And put it in a bin, doesn't that all go in the paper? No, because it's all plastic. Yeah, yeah, it's um, plastic in it. Yeah, so in, in here, this is another one where if I flip it around, I start to see the plastic mixed in with this. To open this up and to get each little piece out and put it each thing, it's just like, it's getting to the point where it's not worth it. And the reason why I stopped this one too is just there's, I don't know where it is now. There's still cereal in this one. Oh, and but so, if the paper were all collected yeah. in a thrifty's bag, paper thrifty's bag, and put inside that bag, it would fall to my lap. Yeah, and so the biggest two things that I notice are the plastic, metal, or paper. That's usually what people have the most of. So in a normal garbage bag, you could fill it full, half full of paper. And then the top, you could put a Ziploc bag of batteries, a little bag of uh, the styrofoam packaging, like from meat or whatever, a little bag of plastics. Other people have the plastic and the metal just in the bottom loose. So we can rip it open, we take the top and grab the paper, put it in the compactor, grab the batteries, put it over here, and then dump the rest out. So how long would you think would be appropriate for your staff to spend on separating one bag of units? So, well, so like just, just generally once we get to the depot, like half, two guys, half an hour would be super quick. Usually about an hour. It takes about an hour to unload the skiff, sort how it. How many bags all together? 50 to 100? For, for whatever is in the skiff. I don't know if there's, uh, there's not 100, but. That's what we were last week. Yeah. Is it? I've never seen it so full. Cool. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Um, oh, what that? else? Yeah. Um, so, oh, and so um, for a little while we were doing bins. When Jace was here, we were doing bins. People didn't want to use plastic bags because it's like make you more recycling to, to do the recycling. It's part of efficiency. I can't really stop empty the bins. Also, if any mistakes are made with that bin, because we have to leave the bin there. If any mistakes are made, it goes into the skip, into the big four by four. When I get to the recycle depot, they see something wrong in that four by four. The whole thing's got to get dumped out. You got to sort through what's in and what's wrong, put it back. So we'd rather sort it there. Can I just say that Jace was trying a system where he sorted it on the barge because he thought it would be time efficient. And he used to have these big yes. bins for everything, and it just didn't work. It meant with gas prices that the barge was slowing down to pick stuff up all the time. Now they have a system where if they can just scoop it, it's better for them. So place it on the boulevard in a place where they could easily get it and they could just go by on that day. Now, different from garbage, which has now in an enclosed bin to keep the animals from it, they do have to stop, but they're often, often delivering groceries anyway. So it's a trade off. But we're trying. Yeah, to if it's in a bin and we just have to pull the bag out of the bin, that's fine. But what was happening was you would have uh, some plastic in the bin, some paper, some whatever. We'd have the other bin set up in the skiff. That would have to come out. The paper gets sorted. All that gets happened. And there's nobody there to ask a question. And I got one guy in the back doing that. One guy sitting in the truck really doing nothing. Whereas if you go to the depot, I got two guys, <laughs> two, guys two guys working. And I got staff there that they could yeah. ask all the questions to, right? And anything that's left over, we just put right back in the recycling bags. We take it downtown and it becomes garbage, unfortunately, right? This is the most time, and that's another reason that I want to communicate to everyone is because the recycling people changed. I built this week, crinkle and soft coming together, and also Will figures out things that are more efficient. So if he tells me, I can tell you, field the questions, and he doesn't have to, you know, be interrupted in his real build trade, which is bringing heavy stuff on and off the island for us. So, and, and to speak to that, I do, like the, the new guys that have started, they're actually quite into the recycling and they sort of came up with this idea to, to, to replace the bins and to reuse the plastic bags, which I'm open to trying. If anybody here wants to try it, you guys, 
you can just tell me your address, tell me your name, I'll write it down and we'll, I'll make it marked on the map for them. And what we're gonna try and do is they'll scoop those bags, the clear bags. Once we dump them, if the bag's in good shape, we'll just X off the sticker. And then when we're doing recycling the next week, we'll pick up the recycling and leave the empty bag there with a couple rocks on it to hold it in place. And then that way we can start reusing the bags without recycling. So we can try that. And if anybody's in, yeah, it's an experiment. If anybody's interested, if it doesn't slow us down too much, we'll do it. And then that way it sort of brings the bins back, but we can still do it quickly. I'm confused. When you're saying bins, are you meaning? Some people have their own bins Carbage that they put out, or are you talking about your bins in the in the? No, some people rather than using a bag wanted to bin. use a bin that they could buy one right. and not have to buy ten bags so they could recycle plastic. I mean, that's yeah, and and sorting that bin yeah. Yeah. on the island at each stop was just way too time consuming. Yes. But for garbage, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Garbage fine. And, and even recycling, if it's in a garbage container, but in the bag, we just have to take the lid off, pull the bag out, put the lid back on, that's fine. You can't do it with your bowl. But I don't want to be here in paper. Here's... With recycling, we don't have the same animal problem. The problem with the garbage is yeah. that the yeah. smell. Yeah. Yes. Good products. Still... <laughs> But overall, everything is really great. I mean, I don't know what the contamination percent is, but I would say it's easily less than five percent, maybe a bit better than the than the bins of the Florida town. Like ours has gotten really good, and this like clear bags helps huge because we just pick something up, you can spin and see what what is it mostly, right? If it's mostly paper, then we go to the compactor right away, start offloading that stuff on the way back, drop everything else in the other bins. So that's been huge. I just want to say thank you, Will, because without you, we're hooped. <laughs>
Very good. Not perfect. <laughs> Not perfect. You'd have to walk with that down, down, down. Maybe you're going to your boat. Um, they they actually don't encourage it. We're collecting with pub materials yeah. there, but you'll see some bags. And I don't think they'd appreciate you dropping it there, but that's one of the places we pick up. Okay. We also pick up town site. Uh, Neil picks up every week from town site. Where was it? Oh, yeah. The bottle. We're not good. You're, not in. you're good, but you're not perfect. And this is what's driving us nuts right now is this. I don't know whether you can tell me which one we don't accept. <laughs> the dime. The green. Not worth the dime. And you don't go through the house thing about you drink it or not or whatever. Just hook on your your uh, receipt from the grocery store. It'll say you paid a deposit. You didn't pay a deposit. We don't want it. Because all we're getting money-wise is what you've already paid in terms of the deposit. So just check and see if it says 10 cents. It says 10 cents for this. It says 10 cents for that. There's nothing about it for that. So please don't give us that. Okay. How can it for you? Anything that you want to go with, uh, if you can't drink it, I, I don't know. It came from you. <laughs> well, we get them. We get lots of them. Excellent fire starters. Sorry. Well, you have to understand it. it's from the manufacturer's point of view. What does it say? Uh, manufacturer, for some reason, has to agree to collect the deposit and so on. And if for some reason they don't want to do it, I don't know, they won't. You can phone and find out, ask the uh, Paul recycling. So, homogenized milk is a high problem. Perfect. Okay. Everything. It's just these, How I don't know you want to class them. And some are in gray areas too, like uh, what's that stuff you get at Christmas? Uh, hey, hey, no. Yeah. Some people drink it straight. I don't know. We throw it in anyways, and they haven't sent it back. That's how we, we check it out. But by and large, it's the, the half and half of the killers. We get about a bag of those a week. It would save us having to get rid of a bag. If you could remember, don't put it in. I'll post it to see if it helps. Here we go. So the bottle's now in one of our recycling depots or pickup areas. I go around once a week with a... a uh, truck and a trailer donated by the Landers, by the way, and I collect in those two things. I take them down to the uh, inner sanctum down here, these two white sheds. <laughs> then on that week, I collect every once a week, and I should have collected today, but I'll collect tomorrow. We have three crack teams. The senior teams are the Goldsmiths, and then the next junior team is McCrory and, and Millington. And then Brendan and I pick up. So and they work uh, one week off, two weeks off, one week on, two weeks off. If you would like to volunteer for that, all I need is your name and phone number. I'll put you on a list. I have some, it's surprising how people want to do this. I have a list and I just start at the top and work down. And when I get people to help, I'll just give them a call and see if they're available. But if it interests you, give me your name and number. I'd be glad to let you help. It goes down and then it's sorted. Down in the sheds, at least 16 different categories where the things can go. This goes into, you don't know this, but you can learn now. This is an NR beer bottle, non recycled, not screw top. The screw top goes in a different area. And that is the NRs, not these, uh, pardon me, not the NRs, but the screw top are the highest quality. Two, two recycling deposits. I took over 1,100 bottles of beer. They picked out two, two that were not screw top. Wow. And knocked me 20 cents off. <laughs> but they can pick out a screw top from men and R from, from here to Peter. Oh, screw top. And our, our, our shirts. <laughs> That's our problems. The, they look for. It. So where was I? Oh, yeah. We, we sort in about six different categories. If you can come down to help us there, you'll see things flying through the air. <laughs> We work at a big table and it's just this. People are talking away and every now and then, what the hell is this? <laughs> it stops. We have to look at what? What is that? And we, there are some weird things out there. And if it's weird, we generally put it in garbage because we, we can't tell what it is. And one or two would spoil the whole thing. Okay. Then, having sorted it all into these different categories, I then give Will a call. Well, can you give me a, give me a bottle off? A bottle off is when we actually turn this stuff in for money. And Will's pretty busy. It might take two to three weeks before he gets back to us. 
but our sheds are usually full, groaning. <laughs> and we call this a bottle up. And there will be one on the 24th of this month. He hasn't got back to me. <laughs> what he tries is coming over, trip comes back. And I have to phone the depot and tell them and see if I can get permission to bring a skiff load in because they have to unload some of this stuff with uh, forklifts. Sure. So I phone Will. He says, yes, 24. And he'll say it'll be there about 12 o'clock. That could mean a lot of things. <laughs> We know that we're working. <laughs> well, we're working. Call me for the point. And then what I do is I phone that list of volunteers. We need about half a dozen people. Hmm? So and I work down, uh, phone Rick, you busy Tuesday the 24th? Yeah, I'm busy, can't do it. Down the list until I get six people. Then Will comes in at the point of time, maybe, or they're about. A minute or two off. Sure. And then we do the, uh, the chain thing, you know. Until we fill the skiff up, we usually put about five what they call mesh bags. We do about five of those, and then we fill the rest with bags. Okay, and then he leaves. Then what I do is I walk around and say, "Say Mo was there, Albert? How much do you think it's worth, Mo? Uh, Seven hundred ninety-five dollars. Well, good. And then I work with the next person. Jim, what do you think it's worth?" I have about fourteen hundred dollars. You can tell these people can't add. The truth is really obvious. But I tell them the value of everything. So it was a sixty boxes, each worth thirty. Together. What do you think it'll be? One person says about twenty five dollars. Another person about eight hundred. <laughs> and they're allowed to bring calculators too. So then, when I sometimes find back from Will, they they bring back the receipt. What's those bags we fill? And then what I do is contact the person who was closest over under, and I get a choice of a Tim Hortons golf, golf cart, Tim Hortons gift card, or they get a case of beer, or they get a bottle of wine. Sorry, yeah, it's a volunteer. Yeah. And don't you don't they get they get to be called sir or madam if they're correct? If they don't want to do those three, they can maybe call whatever they want. <laughs> Uh, it's an equal opportunity, men, women, we're all, you're all welcome to come and help. I'm supposed to take a group down to the inner sank if anyone wants to see inside the sheds. Quick question. Sure. Um, is it correct American bottles or international bottle of drinks? Are usually not screw top. Yes, screw so top not, generally not included. No, they are. We're 10 cents a piece. Okay. 10 cents a piece. And so would the screw top. They're only worth 10 cents a piece. But there's some quality control. I think the screw tops go back to be refilled. And they're paying for those to come back. I think they're paying more than for 10 cents for these gifts. There's going to the other bottle place. We've had some of the American ones being pulled out. These, these will probably end up crushed, become road fill or something. The screw top ones, I think, will go back and be refilled. Oh, wine bottles. What do you get for them? 10 cents. 10 cents. What they've done is they, they, they used to be things, nickels, things, 20 cents. They pretty well brought everything to 10 cents. 10 cents, 10 cents. 10 cents, 15 cents. Yeah. Uh, okay, so crushed, uh, like crushed cans, do you prefer the Oh, no, they, and if, again, it's, it's one of the, crushed, no, the uh, young lady was arguing the peculiarities thing, they don't want to crush. Oh, yeah. And I don't understand why they used to. Yeah. Uh, no, the milk barrels should be. They, they don't, basically to... don't like anything crushed because it makes them difficult for their dwight. Identify things. Yeah. It's a measurement. Like there's only like uh, one of those plastic yeah, bags. Yeah, so they can't be crushed. We use plastic bags that they supply and they have fill lines on them. So we know when the, uh, the, the bag of beer is full, when it's up that line, it's 188 yeah. cans. The crushed and clean, or not crushed and clean. Yeah. They still don't want crushes. The occasional ones that we throw them in. Uh, I think it's, it's the company wants to be able to. The companies like Coca-Cola and Labatt want to know how much they're getting back. And beer now, I think they're getting something like 90% of the cans back. The verdict's still out of pop cans. So pop can people have for years fought the idea of paying for bringing them back because they think it will hurt sales. So box wine, you don't take the uh, plastic? Yeah, we take, we, no, we have to turn the plastic plus the paper 
container together. Together. Right. Ten cents. What do you mean by that? Oh, you, you know, wine bottle wow. has wow. a cardboard plus a bag in the shop. Oh, that's a awesome. bag and bottle. So keep it clean with the Do we have to rinse? Who? No, no. Oh, the yeah. wine yeah. Yeah. These, these are becoming the biggest nuisance because they're attracting rats. And they smell. Apparently, like rats eat this stuff. Yeah, well, it's not. Yeah. So you know, like the cheese here. I don't know what it is, but if you wash them, I don't know if it would be the same. So drink less milk. Now, do they do the same thing with oats and silk milk? Yeah, they eat all that. I think come down with me. I'll show you. Can we have the plastic? What happens if the plastic top gets recycled? Or can it I have off? no idea. So we give it to you with the plastic top on? Yes, I have no idea what I send it away that way. It hasn't come back. They send the top on. I rinse them, but I'm thinking about rinsing for rats. That's all. Yeah, they can put it back. <laughs> Yeah. So the moral of the story is thank you very much for recycling. Uh, in terms of money, uh, the last barge off was 823 or something, but we've taken off 14 barge loads, $1,400. Secret is beer cans. Let's hear it from the beer drinkers. It's almost $30. So next time we see those homeless people pushing the cart with the three bags yeah. of beer on it, that's a hundred bucks cash free. Okay, a tax free or something. Yeah, they're doing very well. And it's the beer people that make the fourteen hundred dollar barge load. We can put twenty or thirty bags here on it. That's big money. Yeah. No, it's not Neil. Couple of things I wanted to point out. Senior sorter here. Senior sorter. Oh, <laughs> beer boxes are useless to us. They're just a nuisance. We have to deal with them. They have to go off the back of the barge when we do a bottle off. We don't get anything for beer boxes. Slumber size wine bottles for 20 cents. Yes, sir. Regular up to 750, 750s for mm -hmm. 10 cents. Yeah. Um, Milk bottles. Ten ten. Milk bottles. Big or small? No, milk bottles. Carton. Avalon milk Oh, bottles. those. Yes. They're a dollar fifty. Wow. And you can return them for refill. You can return them for refill. Yeah. Wow. Sorry? You can return them for refill and thrifty. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And the latest one we think is the growler. Oh, yeah. 10 bucks a yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. It's really frustrating when we're we have a pile of stuff there, we dump a bag out, and there's tin cans. There's um spray bottles for cleaning oh, the house. Yeah. There's soap bottles in there. There's they no deposit on those. It yeah. just becomes junk for us. We have to deal with it. Otherwise, eventually, even the, the sheds, we would have any room to work in there. And I, I picked up a bunch uh, yesterday over at town site, and someone had dumped a whole bunch of tin cans in there and a cookie tin and all kinds of stuff. And I pulled out the, the, the paper. Um, boxes for the beer cans and took them up and dumped them in their dumpster. But we don't always have time for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, so, it's not all it's not all, all that often. You are you are pretty good and, and we just do appreciate it, but you're not perfect. That <laughs> is <laughs> <a beautiful time. laughs> yes. To inform your guests when you have guests, if you have an Airbnb about the system and that those deposit areas are only for bottles, not for garbage and recycling, because occasionally. I know from the one outside our edge that we'll find garbage and recycling systems in there. Yeah. Anyways, thank you all for thank cooperating you. in the conference. Well, we'll, so we'll take a field trip down to the inner sanctum and you can ask for a seat. And if you're interested, so give me your name and number and I'll put you on the list. Thank you very much. Thanks.